Exocytosis is a process for moving substances out of cells. And it's one of the active processes, which means that it requires energy in order to happen. Now, exocytosis is essentially the opposite to a process I've talked about in another video called endocytosis. Endocytosis is a process that's active, requiring energy, where substances can move into cells. And you would remember I used the Pac-Man analogy where it's a way that cells are engulfing and bringing things in. Well, because exocytosis is the opposite, it's basically like this. One active process for bringing substances in and one active process for bringing substances out. Sure, exocytosis is probably not as disgusting as this, but it's a good way for you to remember it. So let's take a look at some details of how exocytosis works. So in the video about endocytosis, I used this diagram as a simple way to show you how you could draw what happens when substances enter the cell via endocytosis. And as I said, exocytosis is pretty much just the opposite. If we just drew these arrows going in the other direction, that's what we would see. You can see it's just the opposite of that process. Let's put endocytosis away so we don't confuse ourselves and just focus on the exocytosis process. So first of all, we would start with some sort of substance that's packaged into a vesicle. And it would be packaged into a vesicle by the Golgi body. If you remember learning about that organelle before, we think of it as like the post office of the cell. It packages up substances that are gonna be secreted out of the cell. So here is one of those things. It's a vesicle. This pink uh, dot in the middle here is some sort of substance, a molecule, a particle, something that's gonna be removed from the cell. So then that vesicle moves to the cell membrane and fuses with the cell membrane. The membrane of the vesicle and the cell membrane are actually made of the same substance, phospholipids and proteins. And so they can join together easily, just like when two bubbles meet together and they just spontaneously combine. So that's what happens. The vesicle moves, migrates towards the cell membrane. It fuses with the cell membrane. And then you can see we begin to have this little opening here which is where the, like uh, in that emoji that I brought up before, the substance is gonna be released or spewed, as I sometimes think of it, out of the cell. So the contents of the vesicle here are beginning to be released from the cell, you can see, and then finally we'll finish with the substance now completely outside of the cell. So as I said, it's the, it's the reverse of the endocytosis process. In endocytosis, substances enter the cell in the reverse of what we've just seen here. So if you are asked to draw a diagram and describe what happens in exocytosis, you can use these four stages and these simple diagrams and descriptions to explain what's happening really clearly. A really handy way to remember exocytosis and what it is, is by remembering that exocytosis is where substances exit the cell. And I've underlined here, exocytosis, exit. It's the EX for me that helps me remember. Just like with endocytosis, where substances enter the cell, exocytosis is where substances exit. So we can finish with this more sophisticated diagram showing the process of exocytosis. It includes the Golgi body here, which you might recognize, uh, the formation of the vesicles, all of these little membrane bound structures here are vesicles, moving through the cytoplasm of the cell, making their way to the cell membrane, fusing with the cell membrane, and then releasing their contents outside the cell. You can see here, this is the secreted material. A great example of exocytosis in action is the cells of your salivary glands. Quite often if we'll smell or anticipate a delicious meal, we'll start to salivate, and that's a result of the process of exocytosis happening inside of those cells in our salivary glands, producing and then secreting saliva by exocytosis. Another example is the cells of the endocrine glands, 
that produce and secrete hormones which travel around our body as chemical messages. So that's our process, exocytosis. Remember, it's the complete opposite of endocytosis. It's one of the active processes for substances moving out of cells, meaning of course that it requires energy. I hope this has helped you to understand it better. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.